Back at Palmerston Weir, Morgan and uh, Asa Cooper approach the weir. Shoot it on the right-hand side and get through without a hitch. This is Shane Timlin and Sean Martin. You can see they're bringing some of the river with them. They've caught some of the debris on the way down. They're going down cautiously, treating Palmerston with respect. They get to spun around, but safely negotiated. Up ahead, the final obstacle on the course, Chapel Lizard Weir. The Tordoffs fell out here in the 1993 race, yet had enough of a lead in hand to win on that occasion. They have no such luxury this time, though, with Butler and Chapman and Mason and Johnson in close formation, all safely through. Back at Palmerston, we are Shane Devoy and Nigel Jones from the Wildwater Kayak Club. And they take it again on the right-hand side, always safer to leave the left-hand stopper alone. Ian Pringle and Howard Watkins are over. Back at Wren's Nest, Andrew Stanley from the Norwich Canoe Club in the veteran K1 class. He's having problems and he is stuck in the stopper, not the place to be. K2 of Geoffrey and Paul Hyde and the Hereford crew looking just a little bit agitated. background there just coming across Brian Fanning in the Whitewater class. The paddlers are definitely experiencing a lot of problems here at uh, Wren's Nest. Chapel Lizard Bridge, still no change in the K2 race. Up front, just over two kilometres to go. Pressure now all the way for the Tordoffs on this flat water. Gary Meyer taking the fast and indeed the only route down Palmerston down the centre. Fergus Cooper has already gone through. He's only 50 seconds ahead, though the gap is closing rapidly. Can Gary Meyer make up the difference? This is Chris Norbury at Wren's Nest. Chris is one of only three Scottish paddlers competing in the Whitewater class. Number 323, three, Stephen Green, representing the British Canoe Union. Hold on the stopper. And to safe hands there. The K2s sprint for the line, the Tordoffs holding off the challenge of James Butler and Damien Chapman, Michael Mason and Malcolm Johnson settling for third place. And so the form pair, Alan and Ian Tordoff, come home in style, winning their fifth Liffey Descent title, completing the 17.6 miles in a time of 1.53.39. What an achievement, five in a row. K2s can enjoy a nice warming drink, the leaders at least, but uh, back up the course, the race continues. This is Bradley Lincoln and Paul Fielden. They come to grief at Palmerston. This is Dermot Hudson, number 679. He's in the K1 class, uh, getting himself caught in that stopper, as so often happens, but uh, negotiating his way out of it very well indeed. Ian Clark and Ashley Starr, they aren't so lucky. They've gone again. We saw them swimming at Straffan. Michael O'Mara still holding his lead over Scott's Fraser Gormel in the white water. And here's Fraser now. He's been having his problems. He can't control it at uh, Palmerston. And yes, he can. He's managed to escape from the grip of that left-hand stopper. And now for the battle of the K1s. Gary Meyer is pulled right up on the stern of Fergus Cooper. He's come right back after that disaster at Straffan. James Treadgold and Heather Brough looking just a little bit wobbly at Palmerston. Too wobbly for their own good, unfortunately. They've gone for a swim there. Brendan Devlin from the Wildwater Kayak Club in the veteran K1 class, and that is the way to do it. Martin McCarthy in third place in the Whitewater Division, looking very relaxed in a, a boat which is well suited to those conditions. This is boat number 16, Malcolm Carey from Belfast, Charmian Gradwell from Richmond, and they are in big trouble at uh, Palmerston. And they're gone. Number 151, Cynthia Berry won the women's Whitewater title last year. She's currently in second place in the women's K1 class behind Michelle Barry. She's battling her way through. And a great finish to a great K1 race. A great finish from the point of view of Gary Meyer. He caught Fergus Cooper, as we saw. 
winning his second consecutive Liffey Descent title. What a race for him to capsize the first wear and pull back a huge deficit. A fantastically determined performance. That's Fergus Cooper coming home looking tired indeed. Must be very disappointed after having led all the way to be pipped in the final stages. Meanwhile, the thrills and the spills continue up the course. It's a very good flood this year again. Uh, just the sheer number of boats uh, in the front group made it difficult itself because you've got to be aware of what's going on around you a lot. We always get a great welcome from the Irish people. Uh, we love coming here, but well, you never know what's going to happen each year. I kind of came out of retirement for this one this year. Uh, whether I can do it again, I don't know. It's been a very good year. Like I made my ambition, which was to get to the Olympic Games and competed in those and then went on to the World Championships three weeks later and got a silver medal, which is like a dream come true. And then the Liffey at the end, just to cap it all off, makes a great year. I think the Liffey every year is something special uh, with all the weirs and all the fast flowing water on it. Um, this year there was a very good, very good flood on the river again and the competition was hot as usual, you know, so it's never, it's never an easy race to win. And here's the 1996 Jemison Liffey Descent Roll of Honour. The Tordoffs taking their fifth K2 title Whitewater class, Michael O'Mara makes it two in a row. Scottish paddler John Speck takes the veteran K1 title. Rob Pumphrey of the British Canoe Union is the clear winner in the Canadian singles. The seventh title, the fifth in a row for Michelle Barry. The Northern Ireland pair, Bobby and Bobby Graham, taking the racing C2 title. Another hugely successful Liffey descent, with every finisher a winner in their own right. Well done to everybody.